<laughs> How's it going? Anthony Frower here at Crate Sci-Fi. <laughs> So now we're going to harvest the seeds that we planted of kit bashing. <laughs> so we've been kit bashing all month, right? And um, what I always talk about on this channel is, is the thing that I do that's maybe a little bit different is then I'm going to incorporate this into some sort of film project, right? So we do a lot of props, a lot of costumes, but ultimately everything on this channel is always um, heading towards a film project. And the one project I've been working on is uh, Zenith Run. And Zenith Run is I'm trying to do a demonstration for the channel of something that is a no budget production, right? And what does that mean? Yes, it's not zero dollars, right? So um, <laughs> people will say, well, you know, the camera, yes, yes, I'm talking about you don't have any money, you have an idea, and then you move forward and you start making it, right? So then it's, you know, you go out on the weekend and you buy dinner and drinks, and maybe spend $100. So it's like that type of money, right? I wanna shoot this weekend, I gotta buy people lunch. Okay, I found my camera person, he's gonna volunteer. You know, oh, we could do the sound, but I need this microphone. I go on Amazon, I find the one that's $20, etc. right? We'll get in, into that more later. But we have this ship, so now we're gonna start putting this into Zenith Run, right? Which is, which is very exciting. So um, again, this is no budget filmmaking, a lot of kit bashing. I'm gonna be doing more kit bashing in the future because it's awesome, but this solved a big problem for me. With the no budget filmmaking, I had my core material and we did that for no money. Now, because I do have a certain skill set, I was adding um, 3D elements, musical elements, and sound design elements that I would use on a, a project with a proper um, budget. And then, interesting thing, the when I dialed it back and used simpler, um, more affordable, more basic, not as advanced processes and simpler music, it actually started coming to life. And then I got into this whole grindhouse look, which, which we'll get into. Um, uh, but enough of that. So let's get into it. So just to recap of a few things basically that go into this. So we have the videos where I do the sets where I make all the sets basically are just office chairs and chairs modified to look like cockpit chairs. So that's the whole easy budget thing right there. Very simple. And then to add another element, I wanted to make a console. So we go to the thrift store and then this is gonna go in between the chairs and that's it. That's the whole set on the green screen. Then we're good to go. Um, just gives them a little something to do and just adds that realistic element and then we're gonna put everything else in the background. Then we load in these very simple elements onto our set. <laughs> set. <laughs> it was an office that um, I had one month of a lease on and it was empty. So this was done for no money. This is a horrible green screen. <laughs> but we'll deal with that in another episode, but I wanted to make it more realistic for you guys. Then we have our footage, and then now we're arrived at where we're at now with the practical spaceships, right? So um, now we're gonna go into the computer. So this is what I would do. I would mock up the shots, then we go and we have our ship that we built, and now we sort of have a little bit of a direction. Things always change, but we know where we're going. Set up the shots. Go back to the computer. Okay, that matches what I had in mind. Again, we'll, we'll modify that, but we're on track. So, like we did in the other video, which I'll link, of course, down below, we're getting our selects. And that looks like one of my good shots there. So I take a look at that. I have it down to about probably four shots. So now, even though it's no budget, we, we're still gonna have to uh, go into After Effects, right? So um, that's the way that we can get a better key when we're keying out the ship. We can add just little elements that really elevate and sort of mask. I always, you know, broken record, but you know, with the props and the costumes, we're always weathering, right? So it's the same thing digitally uh, in the computer, especially in After Effects, we're adding layers to distract from uh, the inexpensiveness that I hate to say this, the, the cheapness of things and just to add a little visual interest. And, and I even look at it more of like smoke and mirrors, right? We're distracting the eye from what that, that just looks like, a, you know, a, a coffee maker. And why is there a green haze around the action, right? So all these layers, um, 
are, are a way to sort of enhance the viewer's experience. And basically we don't want to distract them with, with things that, that don't work, right? So we'll go into After Effects. Again, this is more of a recap, but I just wanted to show you briefly. We're masking out our ship. Now I'm doing, um, we're, we're tracking the camera so I know where to put my stars. This just gives a nice effect where when the camera moves, the stars move generally in the direction that you would expect and it's a nice little touch. The flares, now we're adding the layers, right? I always say this is like the weathering. Gotta have a nebula. <laughs> That's just one of my things. I just like that little color breakup. Nebula is a good thing. I have some flares and now I'm doing some lighting effects. And again, we just think of this like weathering, right? We're hiding the crimes, we're putting the layers and the layers is what really sells it, brings everything together. So now I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh great, I have some artifacting lights, little things that are probably not realistic, but add to the visual uh, look of everything. <laughs> okay, cool, now we're getting to the fun part. Now we're gonna start um, incorporating those ships, right? This, all this work, <laughs> what was it for? <laughs> we gotta put our people in space, right? So let's take a look at the footage that we're gonna incorporate our footage into. You know, I, I'm not like surprised this happened to be honest, because it's, there's this, there's this woman at work and um, you know, I'm pretty sure like she's been setting me up this whole time. Right, so people in costumes sitting in chairs on a green screen. What can we do with that? <laughs> a lot, actually, <laughs> this is the fun part. All right, so let's take a look at what we did with our ships and the look and things like that we'll get into in another episode, but right now we're dealing with showcasing the ship. So let's take a look at that. You know, I'm not like surprised this happened to be honest because it's there's this there's this woman at work and um, you know I'm pretty sure like she's been setting me up this whole time like as far as I know she's into some seedy things. <laughs> right, that's so much fun. But we're not done yet, right? So now we have to have a villain and the swashbuckler who helps them, right? So we need ships for those people. Hmm. How are we gonna do that? Oh, we know. Let's go into the bathroom. <laughs> get some body wash and shampoo. We got this covered. So now we get to kick in all the things that we've been learning, right? So into the bathroom. All right, straight from the medicine cabinet. <laughs> Now here's just a montage. Again, I'll link to a video where we did this in more detail. We paint our ships, we got some Azteking, one of them's just primer, and then there's my heavy weathering, which I love this. Here's a couple beauty shots. Now, um, a lot of people will comment about the weathering. Just know that that's what I like. <laughs> it's on purpose. Hmm. Okay, pop quiz, so we got those ships. What do we do next? <laughs> We go and set up our green screen. Now we're setting up for the B ships, I'm calling them, right? These are the side characters ships. Same process, but now we have it dialed in, right? Now we know what we're doing. That was the whole purpose of this is now we're good at this. Now we're making our movie. And I, and I really like that. It's just cheesy enough, but looks like we know what we're doing. Now we're getting somewhere, right? So uh, another thing with this with this no budget that I ran into was because the green screen was so bad, and, and again, in another episode, I'll, I'll get into how we deal with that. But, you know, I do have examples where I have a pristine, perfect, the way you're supposed to do it, green screen. But it occurred to me, that's usually what you're not dealing with on your first time, right? So I'm, I'm really trying with this particular project to make it realistic, right? It's kind of going back for me, but I'm also going back to the start of what I used to do with more knowledge. So it's interesting. So I'm able to share with you something more realistic um, for what you might want to do. And then um, also, you know, making something fun, I think, in the process. But one element of that is I realized, huh, you know, weathering, thinking about weathering, and weathering um, for video is splotch, splooch, right? Make it look like film. And then um, Grindhouse came to mind, right? So I started doing uh, a Grindhouse treatment on it, which, you know, some people will be like, oh, I wish it wasn't that way. But 
hopefully I'll illustrate why actually it serves us very well, right? So with the grindhouse look, I mean, there's a lot going on in that timeline, but this is actually more of a template. And I can go over this as, you know, let me know in the comments if this is something you wanna see. All right, so we got all our, our B ships set up, right? So let's take a look at a, a little bit of a scene um, for our swashbuckler character and put him in a ship and put him in space. So this is an addition to the Zygon transfer. Sounds criminal, ladies, but I like it. Romine is such a good actor. Oh, so lucky to have him do this for me. <laughs> And again, this is another thing I talk about. He was the Skull General in Galactic Galaxy. And that was the first time I met him, but then we had a good experience. And then for this, he was happy to do it. Um, <laughs> he's so good. He's actually, if you watch Parks and Rec, uh, he's Chief of uh, Flugerberg. <laughs> Hello, Chief Flugerberg. Hey, that's your buddy Andy Dwyer there, isn't it? Such a shame. He's certainly something of a genius. We could use his brains on the force. But anyway, let's let's put him in space and see what he what he does. Okay. So this is an addition to the Zygon transfer. Sounds criminal, ladies, but I like it. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm so happy with that. So now our evil villain, Lisa Fernandez. Again, Galactic Galaxy, uh, she played the, the mother. Very talented actress. And what I love about Lisa is she's also uh, a very prolific stage actor. Like she does a, a lot of um, really great stage productions all over the country. So when I asked her to do this character, this Cruella, this really over the top character, because she has that theater background, she can go really big, but it's still grounded in a reality, you know? Oh, <laughs> so let's take a look at what she was doing. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Uh, um, maybe you can uh, help me. Shh. Keep her silent. I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, I love her performance in this. All right, so now let's put her in her spaceship and let's put her in space. Is the package secure? Yes, ma'am, sir. Uh, yes, the package is secure. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Um, maybe you can help me. Shh. Keep her silent. I'm talking to you. <laughs> so much fun. All right, so now I got my work set out for me. <laughs> but again, this process, I'm excited to take you on the journey. And this kit bashing has been a really great part of that. Also, for me to rethink, you know, what's what's best is not always appropriate, right? You, you want to, you don't want things to be out of balance. You, you want it you know, you're creating something, right? You, you want it to have a, a music, right? <laughs> a vibe. Well, wow. So also, um, it's, it takes a while too. Like that's a big part of no money is lots of time investment, right? So this is probably gonna take a few months, but I always say, you know, the, the time will pass and a few months from now, you'll have this thing you could share or, or you'll still be thinking, wow, I wish I did something. So, so, something to think about. And, you know, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to read the comments. And you know what? Let's just watch it all together one more time. <laughs> You know, I'm not like surprised this happened to be honest because it's there's this there's this woman at work and um, you know I'm pretty sure like she's been setting me up this whole time like as far as I know she's into some seedy things. Okay, so this is an addition to the Zygon transfer. Sounds criminal, ladies. But I like it. Uh, is the package secure?
secure? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yes, the package is secure. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Um, maybe you can help me. Shh. Keep her silent. I'm talking to you. So much fun. So excited. All right. Well, last thing I'll say is please check out the merch shop, right? We got hats. We got shirts. Uh, buying that really, really helps. A um, few of you have said, yeah, but, you know, you only have the, the black. And I'm like, oh, what? Doesn't everybody only wear black? <laughs> so taste the rainbow. <laughs> so now we have the shirts in all colors. Well, just remember more than anything above all else i'm just here to help make sci-fi <laughs>